Oh, whatever shall I do? Y yes that's me. Is there something I can help you with? How do you do, Monsieur Chow? We understand from Mr. Crossell that you recently rented a pair of hairpins from him. My associates and I are very interested in them. Would you mind letting us take a look at them? The hairpins? <sighs> I can't lend them to you right now. I... I've lost them. I don't know how it could have happened. I always kept them right by my side and I hadn't even worn them yet. I spent so much money on them. If I have to pay their original value... There's no way I could come up with that amount of money on such short notice. I... My family is in the ore business too, but business has been suffering ever since the chasm was sealed off. We now have a backlog of paid-up orders just sitting around, so we've been having to purchase some stock from other ore merchants to complete them. A big banquet is coming up in a few days, and several ore merchants I know of will be there. I need this opportunity to mingle and discuss prices. That's what the hairpins were for, to... Well, to keep up appearances. I can't have them looking down on me. But now that I've lost the hairpins, what will I do? Ah, <sighs> why does Paimon have a sudden strong sense of deja vu? W would you really? I sent a commission to the Adventurers Guild, but I haven't heard anything back from them yet. Hold on. Don't run off looking for the hairpins just yet. Mr. Chow, would you let me have a look at the rental contract you signed? Huh? Well, I mean, sure, I have it right here. Here you are. Let me see. Hmm... That's right! Yanfei said she's a legal advisor, didn't she? Maybe she can help Jichao somehow. True. Though surely there must be a win-win solution. Right. I finished reading the contract. The terms are very clear, and they do indeed stipulate that you must pay Mr. Crossell the original value of the hairpins as compensation for the loss. Furthermore, the contract also expressly states that the amount of compensation must take current market prices into account. And given the rarity of Smaragdus Jadeite, I fear that the final amount of compensation may end up being significantly higher as a result. Even higher? Oh no! Uh-oh! Jichou looks like she's about to faint! However, all of this is assuming that it is indeed genuine Smaragdus Jadeite that was inlaid into the hairpins. Did you really have to pause before saying that part? Anyway, the hairpins are lost, so how exactly would we be able to find out if the Jadeite is genuine or not? Whichever way you look at it, we've got to start by finding those hairpins. Except that if we found the hairpins, there'd no longer be any need to check whether the Jadeite is genuine, would there? Uh... Seems right! Please... Please, I... Don't trouble yourselves over this. The fact is, I lost the item and I should pay compensation per the contract. However much it is, I will have to pay it. My family are merchants, after all. It's vital that we keep our word and respect our contracts. Now that it's come to this, I really shouldn't keep Crossel in the dark any longer. I'll go and inform him of the issue and then... negotiate the amount of compensation. Yes, legally speaking, it seems this is the most sensible course of action. But before that, I have some questions about the hairpins. So hold on a moment, Monsieur Chow. When you first touched the hairpins, what did you feel? What did I feel? Well, I remember that the gemstones set into the pins were perfectly smooth to the touch, like the finest quality jade. My family has seen much jade pass through its hands in the past, so I am quite certain of my judgment in this matter. Hmm. Smooth to the touch. Finest quality jade. No, it's nothing. I just need to re-examine a few things. Let's head over to Mr. Crossel's. Ah, Miss Yanfei, you've returned. With Miss Jichao and Toe, too, I see. How are the hairpins? I trust you're quite satisfied with them? Hmm. About that. The 
You lost them? Are you serious? Do you have any idea how expensive they were? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Truly, I am. I'll pay the compensation as per our contract. Every last Mora. Mora? <laughs> Do you have any idea what I had to go through to get my hands on that Smaragdus Jadeite? I... I just don't... <laughs> forget it. Talking won't bring them back. Since Miss Yanfei is here, I suppose we can just have her estimate the amount that needs to be paid. No problem. But before I can give an official estimate, I'll need to do a little market research. Ah, yes. And if I may just confirm again... It was in fact genuine Smaragdus Jadei inlaid into the hairpins, correct? Of course! Genuine article guaranteed, or I pay back ten times the value! Alright, understood. I'll conduct some market research, and once I'm back, I'll provide an official assessment of the sum owed by Mr. Chow in compensation. Please wait here, Mr. Crossel. Thank you very much. <laughs> How could she lose my hairpins? She'd better pay every last mora that they're worth. Looks like I'll have to find some way to raise that money. Please wait, Mr. Chow. I have something to discuss with you. It's not convenient to speak here, so let's find somewhere that we can sit and talk in more detail. My <laughs> How could she lose my hairpin? Miss Yenfei, what is this about? Are you... Are you here to tell me how much I owe? No. What I wanted to talk about is, there is a chance that the ore laid on those hairpins may not be Smaragdus Jadeite after all. What do you mean? Are you implying that you already sneaked off and found them? Obviously not. I'm no adventurer, let alone a member of the guild. I don't run thankless, time-consuming errands for a living. Let's just say I made some deductions. I don't know if Granny told you this, but Smaragdus Jadeite is found deep underground and contains very concentrated elemental energy. If mere mortals come into contact with it, well, they'll be sick in the best case. And in the worst case, they could even experience a dramatic change of personality. It most certainly would not be smooth to the touch. Mr. Chow, did you at any time feel unwell while the hairpins were in your possession? No, not at all. I felt perfectly fine the whole time. Not even the slightest bit unwell. I didn't feel anything special at all, in fact. Hmm. Now that is strange. I noticed earlier that there were elemental traces in Mr. Crossel's vicinity. If I have deduced correctly, he may still have the Smaragdus Jadeite in his possession. If that's the case, we should go confront him right now and expose his dirty scam right to his face! Absolutely not. If we were to confront him now, there's no way he would admit to it. Eventually, he would find some argument to compel us to leave. And then, he'd throw the Smaragdus Jadeite into the sea the moment we were gone. After that, he would simply insist that Mr. Chow pay up per the contract. He would lose nothing. Meanwhile, we would have to look under every stone in Liyue, hoping and praying that the hairpins do actually still exist somewhere in this world. So vivid that Paimon thinks it might be experience talking. Oh, it certainly is. I've seen my fair share of situations like this, and brute force methods are certainly one way of resolving them. Fortunately, I have far more elegant solutions at my disposal. I'll share them with you in due course. Well then... Since you're so experienced in dealing with problems like this, perhaps you could help me, Miss Yunfei. Oh, that won't be a problem. But first, Mr. Chow, can I ask you to please sign this contract? Huh? Does there have to be a contract for everything? Paimon can't even keep track. It feels like Yunfei is even more concerned with them than a certain someone else we know. These are my formal terms of engagement. Everything prior to now has just been pro bono advice, but for me to investigate any further, 
I require a written contract. Any work commissioned but not bound by a contract cannot be relied upon. I understand. Then I will be glad to place this matter into your capable hands if you will take it, Miss Yunfei. No problem. Just sign here, and I'll sign too. Okay. Now write your address here, and then sign on this page as well. And I'll also need your signatures on pages 5, 7, and on the very last page. Finally, if you could just use this ink pad to make a handprint over here. <sighs> this contract has so many pages! Paimon's all out of brain juice again! Alright, that should do it. My fees are the same as always, and they're written in the contract. Have a look through and let me know if you have any questions. I've had a read through. Everything checks out. Well then, here's your copy of the contract. I will retain the other copy. Not for now, no. Despite how intractable this problem might sound, it will actually be quite straightforward to resolve, once we've got some things squared away. I don't believe you have been part of an investigation like this before, in which case, hopefully this should be quite the experience. Miss Yunfei, I have to ask, why are you helping me? Because, as it happens, I'm currently trying to acquire some Smaragdus Jadeite myself. I notice strong traces of geo-energy around Mr. Crossel, so perhaps he has, in fact, secured some. Whether he actually made it into an item of jewelry or not is a separate matter, but either way, it's a lead. As long as we follow it, who knows? We might just be able to get our hands on some Smaragdus Jadeite. Also, the idea of someone abusing the law to their advantage? I won't stand for it. But again, let's not dwell on this. Let's go to... Hmm... Where can we find someone who processes ore? Ha! Ah, I've got it! Let's pay a visit to Chateau, the boss of the Jade Mystery. He's a professional when it comes to working with stone and ore. If Mr. Crossel had his ore worked on at all, Chateau would undoubtedly have been his first choice. Today, we delve deeper into the Why, hello there, honored customers. Welcome to... Th oh, it, it, it's you, Miss Yenfei. Is, is, is something the matter? Sh surely not more spurious claims that, that my jade betting is rigged and, and no one can ever win. Oh, I swear on all that is sacred. No, nothing of the sort. Has a Snezhnine merchant named Crossel enlisted your ore processing services recently by any chance? A Snezhnayan merchant named Krosel, you say? Hmm, I do remember that. He brought me a piece of ore, claiming that it was Smaragdus Jadeite. That was the first time I'd ever encountered it, so I had no way of telling if it was really Smaragdus Jadeite or not. But if a customer insists, far be it from me to contradict them. He was quite generous with his money, too, so I didn't give it too much thought. I processed the ore as per his request. Hmm... Do you have any leftover debris from your work on it? Uh, why, yes! It was my first time encountering this ore, after all, so I kept a few loose shavings to study myself later. They're right over there, in fact. Thank you, sir. We'll take a look at them. What should I try this time? Try your luck betting on Jade? Huh? If my eyes don't deceive me, the cross sections and patterning suggest that these are Smaragdus nephrite shavings. Yes, it's not particularly rare, nor is it especially valuable. It's used to make jewelry all the time. I've heard it said that Smaragdus Nephrite is in fact the outer layer of Smaragdus Jadeite, though no one's ever proven it. A thin layer of separation, huh? If you must see for yourself, try examining these shavings for traces of elemental energy. Smaragdus Nephrite is an entirely ordinary ore, containing no elemental energy whatsoever. Is that so? Well, we might as well give Elemental Scythe a shot. So, did you find anything? So 
they really are different. But wait, how come Jichou was able to tell what it was just by looking at the shards? That's pretty awesome. There's nothing special to it. It just so happens that I've come across a great many of these in my time. These two stones actually look very similar. Someone without a deep understanding of them would find it very difficult to tell them apart. There may be only a subtle difference for the casual viewer, but that translates to an astronomical difference in terms of the market price. And, I'm sure, a significant difference in the cost of having them carved into shape. Alright, let's focus up. We're going off on a tangent. But, never mind, Shirto. Why would Mr. Crossel... <sighs> unusual actions have unusual reasons behind them. Let's take some of these shavings back to Chateau. Miss Yenfei? Might I be so bold as to inquire? Um... If you could just confirm for me once more, sir, Mr. Crossel did indeed claim that the ore he brought to your store was in fact Smaragdus Jadeite, did he not? Uh, yes, that's right. I still have a record of the job with me, in fact. Um, here. It says quite clearly, one chunk Smaragdus Jadeite, uncut. Then I have no further questions. But could I borrow the processing record and these stone shavings? Of course. But might I ask why you need them? Oh, I have my reasons. Ah, yes. Please sign here on this affidavit. This document shall serve as signed proof that these stone shavings originated from the, uh, ore that Mr. Crossel brought to your store. Please read it carefully. Hmm, yes, I see, I see. <laughs> Forgive me for asking again, Miss Yanfei, but might I know the nature of the incident on this occasion? I wouldn't say there's been an incident, just a minor issue. Thank you, sir. I'll take these with me. With this hard evidence to back us up, Crossel will dare try to deny what he did! On the contrary, this is far from sufficient to build a case. We need to find something a little more... compelling. If you want to make jewelry, you need a professional jewelsmith. <sighs> Let me think. Jewelry... Jewelry... Hmm... Uh, nope. Aha! Got it! Sinksy! She often helps people to find a jewelsmith. Let's go pay her a visit. Well, that was quick. How come you know so many people? Because lots of people come to me for legal advice every day. As you know, Liyue Harbor is the city of contracts. And contracts, well, I should say laws, are very important to us. But the amendments made by the Tianchuan to our laws are unnecessarily complicated. How can I put this? It just seems like they're hard to understand and impossible to finish. As such, legal advisors like myself provide quite the popular service indeed. So you help them make sense of the law. But didn't you say that it's hard to understand and impossible to finish? Yes, well, that's no obstacle because I've memorized all the legal codices. You memorized them? <laughs> you sound surprised. Knowing the law inside out is a legal advisor's bread and butter, you know? Oh, this has nothing to do with being an adeptus. I just like reading things. Again, with that casual tone. Well, that's that then. Let's go look for Sinsi. 